Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is always up to something, even when we can't see it. Miracles are coming. Mountains are coming down. Even when we cannot see it. Hallelujah. God is always doing something. Thank God for that song. I thank God for each and every one of you this morning. Come on, give God some praise. That, that's some times, man, in this praising God, you get beside yourself and you forget where you are. Hallelujah. And I was just thinking about what God has done in my own life this morning. So I was over in the corner just reflecting and thinking that God has always been doing something in my life, even when I couldn't see it. And I thank God for that testimony this morning that Dion gave. And I'll just give a little bit more of that testimony because it's so in line with this song. The young lady that helped her with this job about 15 years ago, keep that music going. We're going to keep it playing a little bit in the background if that's all right. But about 15 years ago, that young lady who helped her with this job was out of work herself. And God brought her on to this same company as a contractor. And this young lady has just moved up and moved up and moved up in this company that now she's in a position to help somebody else. Now, that was 15 years ago. And 15 years ago, God knew that today he was going to have a daughter of his that had some issues that needed somebody to help. So God planned that 15 years ago for such a time as this. And I just want to let you know this morning, I don't care what your challenge is. You can't see it. You, you can't see it in the natural, but God is positioning somebody or has already positioned somebody to meet your unique need that's going to come up in the future. You just have to have faith. Don't give up and throw in the towel no matter what today may look like. You need to know that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. He, 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 has, he has a plan to bring you to an expected end to do you good and not evil at your latter end. You just got to hold on. You just got to believe that God has a plan and a purpose for you. He hasn't brought you this far to leave you. He's going to bring you what he has started in your life, whether it's spiritual or natural. God is, God is a God that cares about you. He's concerned about the things that you're concerned about. So in the midst of the challenge, in the midst of the difficulties, we don't throw in the towel. We believe that God is already prepared. He's not going to leave us nor forsake us. And as he has provided for Dion, as he has provided for the young lady, God's going to provide for you. Don't give up hope today. Amen? Come on and praise God with me. I, I'm just sitting here reflecting and thinking to myself, I, I'm so glad that God has allowed us to sim assemble back here together. We may be wearing masks, but we're here in the house of the Lord. Amen. And I believe, I believe that when the doors are shut, we still have to have church, but I believe it is a work of the enemy. Okay. I, I believe he, he doesn't want us to gather together because I can tell you this, when two or three are gathered in his name, that shall he also be in the midst. And when he's here, that's power here. That's joy here and peace here. I came this morning, I was feeling a little tired and I just don't know how people uh, can miss church Sunday after Sunday. I don't know how you do it. I need to get in here. I got to be in, in the house of, of God on a Sunday morning. I, I desire to be here. And, and, and I woke up this morning. I was pretty tired. I've been in London. I was in London all this past week. I, I arrived yesterday at about 2 o'clock. Had to prepare for service this morning. I fly out tonight at 6 going to Chicago. And, and I was just thinking about the week ahead and the stress I had this past week and, and thinking about all these challenges that's coming up. And I, was, I woke up this morning, the alarm went off, and I said, man, is it time to get up already? I, I think my, 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 my biological clock is somewhere across the Atlantic between Houston and London. And I'm trying to get my bearings together. And I was a little tired and said, God, you're going to give me some strength. But it's something about being in the house of God. I'm just reminded of David where he says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I came in here this morning kind of a little tired. But I tell you what, I've gotten my strength through this praise and worship service. And it wasn't because they were singing to me. It's because they allowed me to open up and sing the Almighty God for myself. And it was in the worship experience, it was in me praising God, that God then has given me the joy and the peace that I feel right now. Amen. He says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. 
When, when, the, when the praises go up, we know that the peace, the power, and the strength of God comes down. The blessings comes down on us. So I'm feeling good this morning. Amen. And I'm just thanking God for being here in his house of worship this morning. Thanking all of you for joining in with us. And why have you standing? I don't know about y'all. I'm feeling pretty good. We're going to go into a word of prayer. And we're just going to open our hearts and minds. We know God has already been moving in the midst of us. But God, we want all of what you have for us this morning. And we just say, God, we appreciate you today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have been doing in our lives. It, it is so much turmoil going on in the world today. God, we see people dying and dropping, Father, all around us. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know if we're going to get out of here and make it home safely today. But, God, we just want to glorify you and thank you for waking us up this morning to bringing us, Father, we could be anywhere, but we are in your house of worship this morning. And we just say, Father, we thank you. We appreciate you, God. We thank you for keeping our families, for keeping us, God, for even allowing me, Father, to, to go across the oceans and come back safely, Lord, in my right mind. I just thank you this morning, God. And we know that, that those that have joined us this morning, either in person or virtually, Lord, they didn't come to hear from a man. But, God, they have come to hear from you. God, we all need to be encouraged. We need to be strengthened. We need to be given direction of our everyday lives. And, Father, I pray through the ministering and the preaching of your word this morning, you allow me, Father, use me, God, to deliver a word that's going to bring exactly what your people need. Father, if they need encouragement today, God, give them encouragement. Father, if they need strength today, give them strength. If they need guidance today, God, through the preaching of your word, let it come to them, God. Break every yoke in the lives of your people, God. Free us that we may, Father, not worship you just here, but that we may worship you, Father, in spirit and truth everywhere we go. Let your word, your thoughts, uh, your, your, your mindset, Father, let your spirit, Father, Father, intervene and interact with us every day. Oh, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, free your people in their hearts and minds. Father, bind the distractions. Father, from this, uh, this morning, from last week, from next week, God, that we may clearly be, be open and, and, and clearly, Father, hear from you this morning. And God, in all things, we're going to be careful to give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we make these prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us all come together and say amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. Glory to God. How y'all doing? Glory to God. God, I think, has given me a very encouraging word this morning. And uh, the title of the message this morning is going to be Dressed for Success. Okay, Dressed for Success. Okay, now we all understand the importance of, of clothes in the natural. Okay, and we all like to look sharp, and they got all types of little slang words out there and sayings. When I see some of these brothers in the church, I say, man, you sharp as a tack this morning. You know, you, you're cleaner than the Board of Health. Okay, we, we got all, all types of sayings, and, and we all know that, uh, that, that there's a huge focus on this external attire, this external appearance. And I was reading an article that even talked about just the clothes we wear in the fashion industry is a tree, three trillion dollar a year industry. So there's a whole lot of attention that, that's, that's focused on this external man, okay? And, and, uh, and, and it, it speaks volumes about us, what we wear. It, it tells us sometimes whether we are up to date in our, what we are wearing, whether we in tune with the style, or, or whether we live it in the past. Okay, by what we wear, people going to judge us externally looking at us on, on what we're wearing. Is, is, he, is he up to date? Does he know what's going on in the world? Or is his mind still stuck in the past? And, and as I was just thinking about this, I said, man, I ain't come up here this morning with a pair of bell bottoms on and, 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 and uh, some platform shoes. And some of y'all can appreciate that. Some of the young ones can't. Y'all don't get the joke. Uh, but it can tell us where we are. I can come up here this morning with, some, uh, with a members-only jacket. All right, with my, 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 my sleeves pulled up. Some of y'all understand that. And a pair of Jordash jeans, and they don't even make them anymore. Okay? But, but it'll tell you where I was. I can come up here with some parachute pants on, uh, patent leather shoes, and it'll tell you exactly where I am this morning. Say the brother clean, but he, he about three decades behind. Okay? But, but it says a lot about who we are. And, and there's clearly uh, some I inappropriateness of, of some of the things that we could wear. I could wear that, but you say, man, that, that brother's out of date. And, and certainly if I came up here on the pulpit this morning and I had the parachute pants on, 
So, some things are not only out of date, they inappropriate for the, for the occasion, okay? So, so I couldn't wear my Jordache jeans up here. You'd be looking at me pretty strange because it is not appropriate for this setting. Now, I'm going to be talking a little bit today and showing some parallels between the clothes we wear out here, okay, and, and how the image we want to project. But I also want to make the parallel to it in the spirit. God, God's not concerned with what's going on out here, although he's given us clothes. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But, but God is more concerned about, uh, about who you are and what you're wearing on that inner man. He, he wants the inner man, the Bible says, he wants it to be clothed in Jesus Christ. So that's clothed in righteousness, clothed in holiness. So, so we focus a whole lot about the external. And, and we all understand just in the natural that as you change stations in life, your attire externally ought to change. Okay, so, so as we move from, from high school and college into the workforce, we ought not be wearing our street clothes into the workplace. Okay, now that's, that was when I was growing up. I don't know what they're wearing these days, but we knew that, 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 was, that we, we, we didn't dress for the job that we had. We dressed for the job that we wanted to get, okay? That, that was in the natural. So we recognized there was going to be a transition for us that moves us from this this, this old uh, world that, the, the, that we are, wor- the, the, the natural world of the, uh, 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 the, the high school, college, street world into the professional realm, we recognize there ought to be a change in our attire. But God wants you to know this morning that as you move out of the world into God's kingdom, there ought to be a change in, in, in how you're clothed on the inside. We, we ought to be looking to take off some things and put on some things as we transition from the world into God, okay? So I'm going to be talking to you today about these parallels that, that, that show this, this natural world that we're living in and how we focus on wanting to be clean as the board of health externally. But I want to tell you, you know, God's not looking on what's happening on the external environment. He's looking on what's going on on the inside. And he wants us to be more concerned about what we're wearing on the inside than we are necessarily about what we're wearing on the external. Now, we're talking about being dressed for success. And in the natural, the success we're talking about is moving up the corporate ladder sometimes, trying to get the next promotion, the next job, uh, the the, the next sales. We're going in and presenting ourselves a certain way. But dress for the success in the spirit is saying, I want to graduate from this earth realm, and I want to graduate into glory. And God is going to expect us to have on certain attire when we stand before him if we're going to move on to that next level. So we want to be focused here about dressing for success, okay? And that's both naturally, I'll show you the parallels, but more importantly, dressing for success spiritually. Now, now we know that God gave us these outward clothes, Okay, we know that God provided the first clothes to man, first set of clothes. Well, they made them, but they became necessary for us. And we understand that, and many of you have heard the, the story of Adam and Eve in the, in the beginning in the Garden of Eden. They were there, and, and God had given Adam one commandment. He didn't have a whole lot to do. had everything. Oh, can you imagine free rent and free food and <clears throat> no work, you know? And all he tell you to do is do one thing for me, okay? But Adam didn't do that. And Adam fell. He violated the commandments of God, and there was some punishment. And they said when he did, he said their eyes were open, talking about Adam and Eve. And they began to see that they were naked. They were, they were, they were unclothed. And, and, they, and it's really a sign that they were ashamed of where they were. And this is what sin does to you, okay? It, it makes you feel ashamed, and it's, it's naked naturally, but spiritually, you are ashamed of what you've done. That's how you ought to feel, Okay? That's how you ought to feel. And so they went to try to cover themselves, and the Bible says they went and got fig leaves and, and put them together and began to, <coughs> excuse me, cover their nakedness. But, but the good news about God is, as we've done wrong and repented, then, then God doesn't just leave us with just subpar, whatever it is. Even in the midst of sin, he gives us something that's better. Okay, and it said God then began to see them, and he took those old fig leaves off, and he began to make them uh, clothes of animals. And that was the first sacrifice we see in the Bible. Okay, I'm good, thank you. He, 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 he gave them uh, animal skins for clothes. He made an apron for them. And, and that's how God is, even in the midst of that. God still provided. They were in sin, 
but when their hearts were broken and they were repenting, he was sad for what he's done and didn't want to make that mistake again, God came and gave him something better. And we know the, the, the fig leaves were eventually going to wear out, but those uh, uh, animal skins were going to last a little bit longer. So in the midst of that, God was still providing for them, okay? So we look at these clothes that we see and we think about fashion and how well somebody appears and looks, but when you see it, it ought to be a reminder to you of the fallen state of man. Because God didn't design us to wear clothes in the beginning. They were naked and not ashamed. Okay, so we look and we see this out of appearance and we brag on the clothes we wear and there's nothing wrong with that. We all want to look nice. I want to have my Sunday best on as well. But it ought to be a reminder to us that man have fallen from the state that God intended for us to be in in the beginning. Okay, so it's a reminder to us that we ought not have to put this on. We ought to be still walking around with that glow that Adam had on from the beginning. But because of sin, okay, this is why we're in this right now. But as I've said, this has become a, a, a huge industry in business, and, and it's not the low-end stuff that, that is uh, the stuff that's growing. It's the high-end stuff, okay? We spend a whole lot of money on these natural clothes here. Louis Vuitton is the largest uh, fashion uh, house in the world. Bigger than everything else, okay, followed by Nike. So we spend a whole lot of money on these things. But we as people, we, we do it not because we're trying to impress God, because God could care less about these clothes and how much money you spend on it because he owns everything. But we, we spend a whole lot of our time focused on it, and we judge each other by what we wear. Okay, and we judge each other by what we wear, both in the natural. You see somebody with some nice clothes on. Sometimes you give them a little bit more respect and, 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 and honor than you do somebody who don't have the nice clothes on. And the Bible said we ought not have respect to person. We ought to be looking and treating everybody the same. But human nature says it looked like they got a little money because they got nice attire or clothes on. Okay, now we judge them in the natural, but unfortunately we also judge people based upon externally Okay, not what God judges, but what we look at externally. So there, there are some uh, uh, churches that have very strict dress codes. Okay, still looking at this old external environment. And, and I want to let you know, we're going to get to it, but God's not concerned about this. Okay, he's not concerned about this. He's more concerned about what's going on on the inside. Okay, but, but we, we have, there's some churches or some denominations out there, very strict dress codes. If a woman wears pants, she, she ain't saved. She's she on, she on her way to hell. She's not living right. Just based upon what they see. And I'll tell you this, you can have somebody with the longest dress on be filled with more lust than that you could possibly imagine. So, so it's not this external that, that God is most concerned about. Some, some churches say a man wear jewelry. Amen. He ain't on his way to heaven. He on his way. All based upon what's external. But I want to let you know that God is not concerned about this external as much as he is about the internal. Now, now God wants us to dress modestly. Okay? He wants a man and a woman to dress modestly. And, 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 and he wants a, a, a woman and a man to wear attire that is appropriate for a man to wear and a woman to wear. Okay, and we know in Deuteronomy, it, it tells us that a man ought not wear that which pertaineth to a woman, neither a woman should be wearing that which pertaineth to a man. But that isn't just talking about pants and skirts, okay? They are pants that are made for women. But I ought not be up here wearing my wife's pants is what he's saying. And my wife ought not be walking around with my shirt on because it's a shirt that's built for a man. And God wants to provide the distinction, okay? But it's not just the skirt that's the problem. And people have focused, churches and denominations have focused so much on what's external that we've lost sight of what sometimes what God's really concerned about and what he's most concerned about. So I want to put the focus back where it belongs today. And it belongs on focusing on clothing that internal man or that internal woman. Amen? Amen. So let's go to 1 Samuel. Let's go to 1 Samuel. And we're going to go to chapter 16, verse number 7. And we're we judging this external, okay? But God is not concerned. He's, he, he wants us to be modest. And, and more importantly, he doesn't want me to do anything or wear anything that may hinder my ability to be an effective witness for him, okay? And there are certain things I can wear that could hinder that. So it, it's not just all about the internal. God wants us, because of how people receive us, to be mindful even what we wear, Okay, if I come out there, my shirt is all tight and my pants all tight up on me and I'm trying to go witness to somebody, tell them about the goodness of Jesus, some people may receive me, but there are a lot of folk going to be looking at what I'm wearing and say, I don't want to hear nothing you got to say. 
okay? And I want to dress in an appropriate manner so that everybody receives what I have to say. Not that it's sin, okay? But it's because I want to be an effective witness. Amen? So let's go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And this is talking about how God doesn't look at the, 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 the outward. He looks at the in, inward. And this is a time where God was ready to anoint David as king. He had sent Samuel over to, uh, to, uh, to David's father's house to look at the young men. And, and Samuel was walking, and he's looking like we do, looking at the external. Which one of these folk look like a king? Which one look like? God ain't looking at that. God will take the base things of this world and confound them that are wise. He, he, he took a king from heaven, brought him on down to earth, and had him be born in a manger. So, so if you're looking at the external, you're going to miss God 90% of the time because God is not just focused on what's external. Verse number one, uh, six, 16 and 7 says, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance. Now, I'll just say his appearance, his his, his, his clothes, his mannerisms, his face, or his height. He said, for I rejected him. This is one of uh, uh, David's brothers. He said, for the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outer appearance. He said, but the Lord looks at the heart of man. And that's why in one passage he said, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of your heart, out of your desires, out of your reasoning, he said, flows the issues of life. It's adulteries, murders, killings, lust, adultery, fornication, not coming from here. It's coming from what's going on on the inside. Okay, so he said God looks at the heart of man. And he's telling us that as we are judging and evaluating people, he's not, he's not so concerned about here. Okay, and, and, and we ought not just be concerned about here. We ought to be concerned about what's going on inside of our minds. And we know what's driving us. Okay, we know the things that we think about when nobody's around. We know the things that are on our hearts and our minds when nobody else can see. But we can find ourselves coming out and looking apart. We can look holy. We can appear holy. But I don't care what you think about me. What I'm more concerned is what does my heavenly father think about me? And Christ is going to tell us here in the passage of Scripture that I'm about to read that, uh, that he's more concerned about the internal than he is the external. Let's go to Matthew 23 and verse number 25. And this is Jesus uh, uh, talking to, uh, I'd say, churches today that are so focused on the external. They, they got people with the long dresses. Nothing wrong with the long dresses. I want to be clear about that. Okay? But they got people focused on looking a certain part, and he's more concerned about cleaning the inside of man. So verse number 20, Matthew 23 and 25, it says, Warn to you, scribes and Pharisees. He called them hypocrites or actors. For you may clean the outside of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. So what is he looking at? He's looking at what's going on on the inside. Okay. Thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. So he's saying that the outside ought to be a reflection of what has already taken place on the inside. And when you clean the, the inside, then the outside is going to take care of itself. Okay, so we ought to be more concerned about what's going on on the inside than the outside. Verse number 27, he says, Whoa, he says, I feel sorry for you, you scribes and you Pharisees, you hypocrites. And I'm going to tell you, when I'm reading this, I always put myself in there. Is he talking to me this morning? For you are like unto whited sepulchers. And a sepulcher is a tomb, okay, one that's been painted, which indeed appear beautiful on the outside. But on the inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Okay, so, so what is he looking at? Not the external. External look pretty. But he said on the inside of that thing, it ain't nothing going on. Everything on the inside is rotten. Okay, now they could fool man some of the time. But you can't fool God any of the time. Amen? Even so ye also outwardly appear to be righteous unto men. But within, you are full of hypocrisy and law-breaking. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and you garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our father, we had not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. And we know their fathers, many of them killed the prophets of old for speaking the truth of God's word. So he says, wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. He say, fill ye up 
are then the measure of your fathers. And he goes on to say, ye serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? So he said, you deceitful and dishonest people, you're not going to escape God's judgment at the end. I don't care how righteous you appear to men. Why? Because God is looking at what's on the inside. And he wants you to be concerned about that more than you're concerned about anything else. Now, he called these people vipers, okay, and serpents. It wasn't because they had on costumes. They, they didn't have on a, 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 a rattlesnake costume. In one, one passage, he, they referred to a man as, as a fox. He said, you go tell Herod that fox. It wasn't like he had a fox uniform on or a, a fox costume. What he was doing was looking on the inside of that man. And he said on the inside of that man was filled with dishonesty. He was filled with sneakiness. He was filled with deceit. And this is what God looks at. So as, as, I'm, as I'm getting ready to clothe myself in the morning, I want to be mindful. God, am I clothed the way that you want me to be clothed? What, what are you seeing and what name are you going to put on me? Now, now again, we spend a lot of time. We're talking about the external. There's a lot of parallels between this external and the internal. But God wants us to, when we get up in the morning, he wants us to look into this mirror, which is the Bible. He calls it the, 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 the perfect law of liberty. He wants us to look into this mirror and evaluate how we look internally by the mirror of God's word. Amen. So he's looking past the haircuts, he, he, even though looking past the hairdo, even though we may have spent a lot of time in the beauty shop, okay? He, he's looking past the clothes that we spent a whole lot of time going to the mall shopping for, okay? He's looking past the shoes that we perhaps paid a whole lot of money for, and he's looking beyond those things to say, what's going on on the inside of Mark this morning, okay? A, 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 am I seeing what I want to see? Am I seeing a reflection of myself, or am I seeing something else? And, and there are two people who are, who, who are very clearly uh, uh, understand where you are this morning on the inside. I can't see it, all right? But Pastor Eric can't see it. I can't see it by looking at you. I can see it by the behavior as it shows up. But there are two people that are keenly aware of what's going on on the inside of you. It's you and it's God. Amen? So what I want to tell you, God knows, be true to yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what does God want? Let's go to Romans chapter 13, verse number 11. I'll try to move through this as quickly as I can this morning. Romans 13, verse number 11. He says, and do this, understanding the present time. He said, the hour has already come for you to wake up from slumber. Okay, if you, hadn't, if you, if you still sleep today with all this turmoil that's going on in the world, he's saying, man, it's time for you to hear this alarm bell going off. It's time for you to wake from your sleep. He said, why? He said, because our salvation is nearer now than we first believed, okay? And, and since you've been in church, it's nearer now than when you walked in, okay? The night is nearly over. The day is almost here, and he's talking about judgment time. And so let us put aside the deeds of darkness. He said, and begin to put on the arm of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime and not in carousing. In drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension or jealousy. You know, at nighttime, we sneak around at night and, and do all things in the dark, okay? But he said, let us be, behave as if everybody in the world can see us. The light shining on us, and we're walking in it all the time. He said, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how you're going to satisfy the desires of this flesh. So he's telling us in this passage, put off darkness, put on light, and be clothed in Jesus Christ. Now, this word to clothe means to array, to be clothed with, to endue, to adorn, to put on, okay? And, and, and in a sense, it means uh, uh, to, to sink into a garment, okay? So I'm, I'm just going to sink into it as if it fits me like a glove. Now, now, when I was growing up, they'd have uh, young ladies would wear what they call skin-tight jeans, and they got skinny jeans today. They, they skinny, but they at least got a little elasticity to them. The ones they wore back in the day, you had to almost uh, put some butter in there to kind of slide in them. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, now, here's what he's telling you this morning, though. He wants you to wear Jesus Christ like a glove. He, he wants to make sure there ain't nothing that's getting in between you and, that, and, that, and that, that lifestyle of Christ that he's telling you to put on, okay? Be clothed in him. Shrink into him and let him fit you like a glove is what he's telling you, 
okay? He wants you to fit it, fit it tight. Now, now, this process of clothing or putting on Jesus Christ, it doesn't start after you've been saved for, you know, 10 years. It's the very first thing you ought to be doing when you give your life over to Jesus. It's, I'm, I'm ready to take off, and I'm ready to put on. Amen? So, Romans chapter 3, verse number 26. Now, as we are baptized, our baptism is really getting up, saying, I'm ready to change my clothes. I, I've been washed. You know, sometimes you don't want to put on new clothes until you've taken a, a nice bath and gotten yourself clean. Okay, so this is what baptism is supposed to represent for us. I'm, I'm going down and I'm, I'm cleaning myself up, and when I come out of this water, I'm ready to put on some new clothes. So Romans chapter 3, verse number 26, it says, So in Christ Jesus, you are children of God through faith. For all of you were baptized in the Christ, all of you who were baptized in the Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. So baptism, I'm going down, but as I'm getting up from my baptism, I'm taking on Christ's personality, okay? I'm taking on his love, his gentleness, his long-suffering, his servanthood mentality, okay? And so as Christ walked in this present world, so should we be here, so I want to pattern my life after him. That's what it means to be clothed on him. And that starts the very moment that you give your life over to him. There should always be this process of taking off and putting on. Taking off and putting on. Let's go to Colossians chapter 3. I'm just going to make this point very clear. In verse number 12, he says, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, now, how many of y'all are God's chosen people? Now, don't be scared out there. Raise your hand. Everybody ought to have hands high. Some of y'all maybe need to put up two hands for me this morning. Okay? Now, as God's chosen people, he's telling you, holy and dearly beloved, clothe yourself with what? Compassion. Kindness. Not Louis. Not Versace. Not Louboutin. Not Chanel. Now give me some of the mother ones y'all got out there. Okay, not uh, for the young folk, not uh, Yeezys. Uh, get everybody, not Adidas and Nike. Okay, he said, this is what he's concerned about now. It's the internal. He said, uh, dearly beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, with kindness, with humility, with gentleness, with patience. Bear with each other. Forgive one another. If any of you has a, have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, do what? Put on you a big old overcoat of love, okay, which binds them all together in perfect unity. So everything that we do when we, you know, you got your accessories that you put on, you know, you got your stuff on. He said accessorize all these things with love. Okay, and, and that, that ought to be the, uh, the common factor with everybody. Some of us ain't got no problem with anger like I had. But, but we all ought to be clothed with love and be mindful to put that on every day. Amen. And I say it's, it's like an uh, uh, accessory. We can call it like perfume. Okay, I, I want that all over me. Okay, that when people see me and I interact with people, the one common denominator they're going to see about me and everybody who professes to be a Christian ought to be the love that we have for one another and the love that we have for God's people. Amen? Now, this process of, 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 of changing your clothes, it's not just about putting on. It's about taking off and putting on. Okay, it's about taking off something and putting on something else. And oftentimes as Christians, all we focus on is, is, is putting on. Uh, I just, I want to put on. And what we often do is we start layering on top of, 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 of this old uh, 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 carnal mindset and natural way of doing things. We try to layer Jesus on top of that. But what he wants us to do is begin to take off that old way, that old things, and then put on the new things, which are righteousness and holiness. But in order for those things to stay on, in order for those things to fit skin tight, you got to take off some of that old things, the old way of thinking, old ways of responding, old ways of behaving. Okay? We, we want Christ to stick to us like a glove. But it's a, it's a process of taking off. And putting on, taking off and putting on. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. It's going to make this point even clearer. Ephesians 4 and verse number 17. He says, This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, 
that you henceforth not walk as your buddies walk, your, your old friends in the world walk, okay, as other Gentiles walk. And we know in the Bible there were two types of people they talk about, Gentiles and Jews, okay? And the Jews were, were godly people. The Gentiles were ones that just did what they wanted to do in the world, okay? And, and he's telling us we ought not walk like everybody else, behave and respond like everybody else. Now, now the sad thing is this ought to be messages we hear all the time in church, okay? Because this is what God is about, but we don't. Sometimes we hear just messages about God's blessings, and God will bless you, okay? But we ought to sometimes hear that God wants us to live holy lives, Okay, and, and I'll tell you this, it's so important to hear it because if you don't hear it, you never change. If you never change, you never really appreciate a walk in the joy and the peace that God has designed for all of us to have. You can't have God's joy and peace in your life by walking in sin. Sin and joy and peace in God don't go together. Okay, so you need to hear messages. You, we all need to hear messages that tell me I need to come out of a sinful life and begin to put on things that are pleasing and appealing to God. Amen? Amen. So he says, uh, uh, not walk as other Gentiles in the vanity of your mind. He said, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of what's going on on the inside of your mind who being past feeling have given themselves over to un, uh, lasciviousness, to work uncleanness with greediness. So he's given themselves over to uh, uh, insatiable lust, okay, to, to work uncleanness without restraint is what he's saying, okay. With uncleanness, you ain't got no filters at some point. You just do whatever pleases you, whatever comes in your mind to do. But he says here, but you have not so learned Christ. Okay, you have not so learned that this is what Christ uh, ex expects of you. Christ is telling you there's a different way we ought to live. So we, we're talking this morning about uh, being clothed in righteousness, being clothed or put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and I don't know about you, there have been times where uh, I've gone to my buddies and friends when I was out in the world and I've asked them about an outfit that I was ready to put on and say, brother, sister, what does this look like? And, uh, and, and they tell me, brother, you look sharp. And then I get out there around everybody else, and everybody's laughing at me. I say, man, what is wrong with you? What possessed you to put that on, you know? Now, now the good news is today I don't have to ask my buddy. My wife's going to tell me whether something look good or not look good. And, and, and I, got, I got two boys in, in the natural. They, they don't mind telling daddy you're a little old-fashioned. You need to update yourself a little bit, okay? And I remember we were living in London, and... Uh, and I, we were going to a, a, a barbecue. Some of the folks on my team were having a little barbecue at their house. And, and, and they're not the snazziest dressers in the world. So I said, man, I just need to keep myself comfortable. It was raining outside. If you've ever been the, to, the, to London, it's, you know, normally dreary and muddy. And I said, man, I'm not putting my, my good shoes on to go over there. I put on some rain boots. They may have had a little hole on the side. And I put on some pants that were wrinkled. And I just threw on a little sweatshirt. I'm going to a barbecue. We're going out here to have a good time. Oh, man, they must have talked about me from the moment we left that house to the moment we got over to that barbecue. Just telling me, you know, you look a mess. And, and what I was having was one of those who dressed you moments. You, you, you've had some of those? You know, man, who dressed you? Okay. Now, now I, didn't, you know, I, I didn't know any better. I was just, you know, it's kind of I'm learning, you know. So they have to tell me what's in style and what's not these days. They had to keep me up. Now, what Christ is saying is that we haven't so learned Christ, right? We, we, we've learned Christ a different way that he, he's not just accepting us being clothed with anything. He's expecting holiness out of us. And, and what he's telling us this morning, that sometimes in the spirit, we're having a who dressed you moment. Okay, and some of us have been allowing Satan to dress us for far too long. He, he's been having us wear some things that we know are not appropriate for what we have learned in Jesus Christ. And he's telling you this morning, it's time not to let Satan dress you because you're learning something different this morning. It's time for, for you to allow God to be your stylist, okay, to tell you what is and is not acceptable to wear, and you got to let him dress you. He got to let him tell you what blouse to put on in the spirit, okay, what shoes to wear. So we don't want to have one of those who dressed you moments in the spirit. From this day forward, we want to be mindful that I'm, I got a new stylist. I got somebody else doing my hair these days. Lucifer, you were doing it, but, but I'm going over here to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to let, I'm gonna let the, the, the archangel Michael fix me up this morning. 
I'm going to let old Gabriel tell me what I ought to wear this morning. I'm going to listen to Peter and John and James going to give me a little insight into what I ought to be wearing. Because why? I've learned something different now, not, not walking in the same way. So, so we have not so learned Christ, okay? Verse number 21 says, If so be that you have heard him and have been taught of him as the truth is in Jesus, all right, that you put on. So this is about putting off, putting off and putting on, okay? Not just putting on. You don't want to layer bad, good on top of bad. You want to take off the filthy clothes, put you on some new clothes. Amen? Say that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. That old man is corrupt according to his or her deceitful lust. He said, but be renewed in the spirit of your mind, okay, that you put on the new man. Okay, these clothe yourself with the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness, okay? The, old, the, the false holiness says it's how long your dress is, and you ain't got no rings on, and how you look externally. The, the true holiness says God is concerned about what's going on on the inside. So that's what we ought to be clothed in. Say, wherefore, now he's telling you, putting away lying, take that off, okay? Take off lying, but what you got to put on? Speak every man truth with his neighbor. I don't care how you feel. I'm going to be a truthful person. Taking off lying, okay, that old mindset. So I'm praying to get that out that I may then speak truth every man with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Put ye angry, uh, be ye angry, put that away and sin not. And don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So making sure I'm going to get, become a peaceful person. I'm going to get it right with the person I have challenges with. Neither give place to the devil. Verse number 28, let him that stole steal no more. So I'm putting away stealing. But what I want to do is I want to be a one that's working well. I want to get out and find my own job and, and labor. He said, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may give to him that needeth it. 29 says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. So stop all that old filthy talking and filthy jesting. He said, but let what is good to the use of edifying that come out of your mouth, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And lastly, he says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye have been sealed unto the day of redemption. He says, let all bitterness, verse number 31, and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking Take that off. Let it not be once named among you. Put it away from you with all malice. But what I want to put on now, he said, but be kind one to another. Be tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Now, it's about taking off and putting on. Taking off and putting on. And what happens is we'll put on or we'll layer on, try to lay on the good without really dealing with the bad that's underneath, okay? And, and what happens is sometimes in the natural, when you're out and it's cold outside and, and you, you're going out and you done layered up, and sometimes you lay up for the weather. But as it starts getting hot outside, what you want to do, you want to start taking off some of the stuff that you done put on. So you want to make sure that as you're looking good on this outlier, as in the natural, as you begin to take off your jacket and your coat, you just as clean underneath, okay? So it is in the spirit that when the heat and the temperature starts to rise in the spirit and, 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 and somebody gets to rubbing you the wrong way, you, you want to make sure that everything underneath this facade that you have on the outside is just as clean and pure as what everybody see on the external. When, when I was a kid, my grandmother used to always tell us, that when you go somewhere and you're traveling, going out of town, she used to tell you to put on some clean undergarments because you never know when that was going to be an emergency happen, and you don't want to find yourself at the doctor with, with your undergarments soiled. Okay, now it's the same in the spirit. Sometimes people can say things to catch you off guard. It's an emergency, but as long as in the spirit, okay, you're just as clean underneath, that, that the heart is just as clean and pure as what people see in the external. You ain't got to worry about somebody catching you off guard. Uh, when, when I was out in the world, I used to have a problem with profanity. I would curse, and sometimes it wasn't, it wasn't, no, it wasn't no rhyme or reason to it. It's just part of my vocabulary. And I used to be so concerned that, man, I'm going to mess around and be around somebody and stump my toe or hit my finger, and what's going to come out is going to be an embarrassment to me. Okay? So I was intentional about saying, you're going to do something with this mouth. 
Not that it's still on the inside of me, not that I want to do it. I want to tell you who you really are is what you want to be on the inside, okay? Now, that, now that you just got to get that man to come on out and, and be more visible. But I wanted to change that. And I remember one time being around somebody, slammed my finger in the door, and nothing came out but, but the goodness of God. Amen. I say, help me, Jesus, when it happens. Amen. So God had taken this out because I was intentional, okay, about getting that old man out of me so that I can be as close to Jesus as I could. So when the emergency came and the heat started rising, what they seen come out of me is what they saw projected in the front of them. Amen. So don't layer on top of or try to layer on top of uh, 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 the, 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 the new man, the old. Get rid of that old man, okay? Get rid of the old man. And what I want to do right now is just walk you through a little chart, and I want you to take a little inventory about where you are. And we're about teaching, but, 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 but serving God and, 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 and living a life and putting on the Lord Jesus Christ, it's intentional. It's not accidental. I'm just not going through life and just my mind all over the place, and I ain't thinking about this man on the inside. No, I'm thinking about him every day. And I'll just tell you as I get ready to talk through this little chart here, uh, 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 I, I, my, my wife will tell you, I, I'm so rushed and so busy that when I wake up in the morning, I don't want to be thinking about what I'm wearing, okay? When I wake up in the morning, I got my clothes laid out. They already in the closet hanging up. All I got to do is go grab them. That helps that I only have white and blue shirts. That helps because they kind of match with anything, but I'm intentional about it the night before because I don't want to wake up and be caught by surprise and trying to run out of there. What I want to tell you is you got to start thinking about what you're going to wear in the spirit the next day too. You got to be thinking about your challenges, the issues of life, and start saying to myself, I want to be intentional at night. Tomorrow is going to create a new set of challenges for me. And I want to be mindful of what I want to put on. And, and this is just a, a, an example here. They're going to pull this chart up for me if we can show it. This is just an example, okay? And you can do your own, okay? This is, this is just an example. Now, we, we go shop for these, these new clothes we got. We, we go to the mall and we go and look in, in, in uh, give me some of these stores we go in. Neiman Marcus, that's some of the good ones. Some of us, like me, sometimes I go to Walmart and I, I go look for mine at Target's. All right, but I know some of y'all like to go to Neiman Marcus and Saks and uh, some of the other high-end places y'all like to go to around here. What's that? Macy's and the Galleria, y'all go to the mall, the Galleria, and look for your stuff, and Saks Fifth, the Fifth Avenue, and look for it. Okay. Now the good news is when you when these clothes that I'm talking about, God wants you to put on, you don't got to go nowhere. Okay. You just got to open up your Bible and begin to look in there, and God's gonna tell you what you ought to be putting on and taking off. You ain't got to go nowhere. But what we want to do is we want to be intentional, not accidental. So I want to be looking at, okay, what's my outdated attire for the, for the, for the uh, uh, circumstances in life that I am in right now? Okay, so I want to, I want to say that I'm, I'm, I'm a child of the Most High God, and God is expecting certain attire from me, and I want to be intentional. So what am I taking off? Okay, and, and, and what are some of the, the, the new outfits that I need to put on? So I'm taking off, okay, and I'm putting on. So my prayer at night is I'm, I'm praying about the thing that I want to take off. God, help me to get this, this lust out of my mind. God, I, I want to be able to look at my sister, Father, as a, a true sister in God. God, I want to be able to look at my brother as a true brother in the Lord. I, wanna, I don't want to look at things that are ungodly. God, help me to have a pure mind and a pure heart. I'm taking off and I'm putting on in prayer, okay? But it's intentional. It's not accidental. It's intentional. And in order for you to be able to, uh, to clothe yourself in the right way, and really dress and allow God to be your new stylist, it's not going to be accidental, okay? It's going to be intentional. And, and, and the good thing about these clothes is they're all free, okay? You ain't got to pay nothing for it. It's a little time in prayer, okay? It'll be intentional about, uh, about, about, uh, about going down and asking God for the assistance you need that you may put those clothes on, but it don't cost you anything, and I'll just begin as I was, I was thinking about this message today, and I was in prayer, and I just begin to think about the amount of money we pray for some of the, the, the things you, we wear and we buy, okay? I looked at a pair of these Christian Louboutin shoes, red bottoms, things about four or $500. That's probably on the low end, huh? You can probably find them. Look, at I know low end. And I know that's right. Okay, that's the low end. They're $1,000 shoes, okay? And I begin to think about, I said, man, are the things that valuable? Okay, and I just begin to think about that, that first set of clothes that God provided to Adam and Eve. 
if we had to value that today, I imagine nobody could buy it, huh? Right? It's, it's invaluable to us. And so what he's given us, you can't put a dollar amount on it. It, it. it is invaluable to us. So we have to be intentional about taking off the things that are not right and putting on the things that God wants us to put on. Now, as, as we go to the mall, you can, you can take that down now. I think everybody has it. But you need to make your own chart, okay, based on where you are. But as we go to the mall, I don't know about you, but I've been there sometimes, and I walked in, and, and I've looked around and seen some things around the mall that I like. Okay, and I looked through there, and, and some of it, I don't know about you, but I like to shop on sale. So sometimes I don't like to buy it unless it's on sale. And I've gone in sometimes and found, I found a really nice suit on sale. But you know what? That suit couldn't fit me. Okay, well, I, I was a little bit too big for it at the time. But you know what? I wanted it. So what I did, I went on and bought it. And for me, it was, some of y'all, you know, y'all been there. Say, so, you know, we're going to take it to the tailor and see if the tailor can fix it up for us. Okay. Or I may need to lose a little weight because I know I'm going to look good in this suit when I get it home. Now, I'll tell you this. is God is trying to clothe you on the inside. There are some things that he's telling you you got to put on that don't fit you right now. Okay. They, they, you're not going to be able to wear those things right now because they are not conducive with your personality. Now, you, you're going to have to do some dieting to be able to get into the love that God wants you to have. Okay. To get rid of the lust and the anger that, that's been attached to you for such a long period of time. God, I love it. I want it. I want to put it on, but it ain't fitting me right now. Okay. So you're going to have to do what I had to do. I had to go on a diet. And what God is telling you, you're going to have to go on a diet. You're going to have to make some adjustments in your lifestyle, amen, that you may be able to fit the clothes that he's trying to put you in right now, okay? And, and sometimes that, that, that change in that, that, that lifestyle, it starts off with us in the spirit is sometimes you got to change your environment, okay? Now, if you, if, if you want to wear these clothes that he wants you to wear, sometimes you got to change your environment. And just like in the natural, when I wanted to wear that suit that was too small for me, I couldn't go to McDonald's every day. I had to stop going around those places because I, I was trying to fit myself into something that I knew didn't fit me right now. It's the same way in the spirit. There are some places that you're going to, some things that you attach to, some people that you in company in. That if you want to wear these clothes, God said, you're going to have to come out from among them. Be ye separate, said the Lord. He said, then he's going to receive you and you're going to be his sons and his daughters, said the Almighty God. But the first step to kickstart this diet that he wants you on, you're going to have to come out from among some of the folks that you attach to. Anything or anybody that hinders my ability to wear these clothes, I got to cut you loose. I, I got to deal with you from a distance. I can't be in that company anymore. Okay, because I'm dressing for the job I want and not for the job I have right now. Amen? So, so I got to sometimes change some things about me. Okay, I, I got I to make sure in, in the natural, I got to make sure that I was, I was on my cardio. I was running on my treadmill, and, and I was getting this cardio right because that was helping to kind of uh, take away some of this, this excess weight that I had on me in the natural. But, but in the spirit, God saying, you're going to have to pray. Okay. Now, now, that's cardio for this heart, okay? That's cardio for the heart that God is concerned about. So the treadmill is cardio for this natural heart, but that prayer is cardio for the spiritual heart, okay? So you got to go down and pray. These are, these are the things that's going to allow you to, to fit into these clothes, okay? And, and you got you to gotta sometimes push away from that old, 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 natural, that old natural meal. You got to fast every now and then, okay, because you're trying to get into these clothes. And what God wants you to do is be more mindful about anything that's hindering your ability to fit these new clothes, this new wardrobe that he's trying to get you. And he wants you to take, make some adjustments. It's not going to happen by accident. It's all going to be intentional. Amen? Now, now, we've been wearing these blouses and these clothes, and, and God is now saying it's time for us to change. Okay? He wants us to wear this blouse of peace and, and take, off, take off this, this shirt of strife and debate. That's what some of us have been wearing. He wants us to have these shoes of, of blessing and love and take off these sneakers of envy. All right, so you're taking off pants of concern for others instead of the skirt of selfishness. Okay, this is what God is looking for. Undergarments of praise instead of the briefs of complaints. Okay, and whining. Okay, now, now God is looking for us all to make these changes, okay? And, and, and as I get ready to close this morning, you need to be mindful, okay, of what we're putting on, taking off in the spirit, and that is more important than anything else. 
and, and, and the best clothes you could buy today, most expensive clothes, they're not even worthy to be compared to the clothes I'm talking about. Okay, and I know we're getting ready for this uh, holiday season. They got a lot of galas we're going to. And in fact, we're going to a gala on this past Friday. It's a black tie event. This, this Friday coming up is a black tie event. And we got to wear our tuxedos and wife wearing a, her uh, e- evening gown. And, and that's how you get on in there, certain clothes for those occasions. But they're not even worthy to be compared to the clothes that God's trying to give us. Okay, the, the clothes that God's trying to give us, they, they're not just designed to get us into some natural party. The clothes I'm talking about are designed to get you into, all, into heaven uh, where Almighty God lives and resides, okay? So they're invaluable. And, and the thing about these clothes, they, they, don't, they don't run out of season, okay? They, they're good for all occasions and good for all seasons. And once you decide to put them on, you don't have to worry about whether they're going to be outdated or not. No, these, these clothes are good for eternity. They last always. So as I get ready to close, let's stand on your feet. I'm going to go to Revelation chapter 7, and then, then we're going to end up here. So these clothes, good for all seasons, okay? But at some point, God is ready and prepared. We're going to turn these clothes in, okay? The Bible says that mortality must be taken off, that immortality may be put on. And he's telling us in the passage, corruptible must put on incorruptible at some point. So at some point, we're going to come in and we're going to change uh, these natural clothes, even the spiritual clothes that I'm talking about, for something that is far greater. And God said he wants all of us to have this white robe at the end. So Revelation chapter 7, the only way you're going to get that, you're going to be clothed in the spirit with the right clothes down here. So Revelation chapter 7, verse number 9. He says, after this I looked, and there, there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. Now, I don't know about you, but I want to be in that number. Amen. I don't care if I'm number 1,195,000. You know, I, I want to be in that number, okay? He says, he, he says I looked. And there before me, this is, uh, this is John writing. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. He said, from every nation, from every tribe of people, and every language. And I say, they're going to be people from all different denominations there, okay? He said, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And he said, because they have had on the right clothes down here, they, they've worn the right things. They've allowed God to be their stylist down here. He said he saw them, and they were wearing white robes. They were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Glory to God. So we are, we are, we are dressing down here that when we get ready to make it up there and we stand before that judgment seat, I'm not worried about what clothes he's going to give me here. I want my white robe. Amen. I want to be standing before that judgment seat with my robe on. And that's only going to happen if I have the right robe or the right clothes on down here. We don't have time to play. We, we don't have time to pretend the world is just in disarray right now. And, and if you've never been, uh, had a godly fear, okay, now is the time. Okay, and so we don't want to close this service without giving you an opportunity to come and make this altar call. And and the altar call this morning, I'm going to say, is for those who are looking to say, I want to make some changes. The clothes I've been wearing and the things that I've been putting on, I recognize, Father, I need to take some of this junk off, and I need to put on the things that you have asked and commanded and required for me to wear. I don't want to miss heaven. Okay, I don't want to miss heaven. And if that's you this morning, I want to invite you to come on out. And if there's others here in in the congregation this morning and you want prayer for something else, I want you to put your hand over your heart, and we're going to have somebody come and pray for you. But if you're looking this morning and you just say, you know what, I'm ready to make a change, come on down to the altar. Amen. The good news is we can't see you, but God can. And sometimes the, the humility that's necessary to become what God wants you to become, it requires you sometimes to walk out of your seat and say, Father, that is me. Okay, and I don't care who knows or who sees it. I remember I done made plenty of altar calls in my life. Okay, sometimes I was living for God. I I had committed my life to God, but there were some things I knew I was still struggling with. And I didn't just sit there and pretend like they weren't there. I went and said, Father, it's me. God, I need your help and your intervention. And as Pastor Eric quoted that scripture this morning, if you draw not a God, 
God draws nigh to you, and you're not going to be able to put the clothes on that he wants you to wear, amen, without his help and intervention in your life. You can struggle trying to put them on, but until you humble yourself and say, Father, I need your help, you're never going to be able to put them on. But God is here this morning. And he's ready to help you. And those that are at the altar are going to be asking you, what do you want prayer with and for? We are a confidential church. Nobody cares. Okay, all we care about is that you're getting right what you need to get right with God. Amen? So with all heads bowed, we're going to go into a word of prayer. And for those who are not needing prayer at all, we'd ask that you pray with us.